Hello. Hi, everybody. As you know, this week we're doing things a little differently. We're having one video every day of the week, uh, all focused on reviewing our Atlantic Crossing experience. This being our first Atlantic Crossing, we have a lot to talk about. And today we're going to be focusing on health. Yep. Um, so specifically, this is food, diets, and hygiene. Yes. Food, dieting, and hygiene, very important when you are on a long-term voyage. Yeah, because um, there's nowhere to pull over to, for anything. <laughs> yeah, so provisioning is like the number one thing that starts it all off because you're not going to be able to get an extra snack on the way. <laughs> yeah, you don't rely on fish as a reliable food source. Yeah. Uh, we caught two fish. We had some friends that we were buddy boating with. They were catching like a fish every other day. Yeah, they were having wonderful experiences with fishing. We didn't really try very hard because uh, after our second fish, I got really sick. <laughs> so that kind of killed it. Um, but we were lucky enough to have really almost over-prepared when yeah. it came to our food. And that was an awesome thing because we had choices for both heavy weather and calm weather cooking. Mm -hmm. And we also had enough water throughout. So we were able to shower when we needed to, and we were able to wash dishes and have enough to drink, which is the most important thing. Yeah. So we carry a ton of water. Uh, as one of you guys have mentioned to me, I carry too much water. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we carry 200 gallons of fresh water, and then we actually have enough water for two people for 40-some days in bottles. Yeah. So we have a lot of water. Yes. Now, on the entire passage, we consumed 50 gallons from our tanks and 15 gallons from collapsible tanks that we filled up as well. So a total of 65 gallons. And that was including drinking, washing dishes, and showering. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons for this is because we do have a saltwater faucet system set up. Herbie did that. Yeah. And so that saved a ton of water. So absolutely. everything we did was with salt water, and then the very end, we rinsed with fresh. And the fresh water we rinsed with was through a foot pump, so it really regulated how much water we actually used at a time. You work for that water. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so we were completely set with water. If we had, if our tanks drained for any reason, we had all that, those bottles of water under the floor. And so um, I think that's super, super important. Yeah, because you can go without food for quite a long time, but mm -hmm. you'll die pretty quickly without water. Yeah. And that brings us also to hygiene. Um, we'll take like a little break for hygiene and then we'll get back to food. Yeah. Uh, so, because it's really important for both morale <laughs> and health yeah. to stay clean. Um, however, you really do have to dial back yeah. um, with your comfort. So it's funny. There was a video from SciShow recently about what happens if you stop showering for a week. <laughs> and I was watching that and I'm thinking, ha ha, I already We could have told you that. <laughs> yeah. So the, according to that show... A lot of bad things, but the reality is not much at all. We ended up showering once a week. There were parts of our bodies that we washed more often, but as far as like entire body shower, hair yeah. and all, um, once a week. And that was for two reasons. Um, one was to really help the water consumption uh, because that's, as we mentioned, really important to save water and the other was because it was really hard to shower <laughs> yeah the boat's moving around yeah. and you don't want to it's just it's like really difficult to and stand in the head and use this insecticide sprayer and it's cold yeah the north atlantic is actually really cold even in the summer like it was like high 60s low 70s yeah it was chilly it's very uncomfortable but showering um, you feel I mean, great you after feel you feel really good. So morale, I actually, I discovered that it helped me like just mentally to shower, to be clean. Like I, I didn't realize how much it affected me to feel clean after being so dirty for so long. Um, the problem was every time you shower, you have to also change your sheets because you don't want to get all dirty from your nasty, smelly sheets. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, let's be real. They get pretty nasty when two people are 
showering infrequently and sleeping perpetually in them and sleeping on and off like it's just you spend a lot of time in bed because there's nowhere else to be a lot of the time yep um so when you have to do that as for and you don't have like an unlimited amount of sheets and it's just you know that being said you really do need to uh, make sure that certain areas of your body stay clean so you don't get sick um I think that's pretty obvious. I don't need to go into that. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, one other thing. People ask, oh, why don't you take salt water showers? Mm -hmm. And no, because when you wash with salt water, then you're salty. And then everything you touch gets salty. And then, like, for example, say we're sitting here with our salty bodies. These cushions are going to get salty. And then they're going to attract moisture and then grow mold and mildew and just turn the boat into a dump. It can be really detrimental to your health, too, because once you've got mildew all around you... Um, yeah, it's going in your lungs. It's going it's, in your lungs. Yeah. It's really bad. And then uh, the other problem is the salt crystals will recrystallize and then they're scratchy. Mm -hmm. So it's just not good. So yeah. we didn't do the salt showering at all. No, and we had enough water so that it really wasn't necessary. We found that you could actually get hot water if it was a calm enough day to pour your water into a teapot, mm -hmm. heat it in on the teapot, and then pour it into the insecticide spray and mix it with cold water so that you don't boil your skin. Yeah. <laughs> Once we figured that out, it actually was much more comfortable to shower, but you really, really, really don't want to do it with salt water if you are living long term in your boat because it will make everything moist and nasty and your clothes will get moist and that like everything yeah it, you'll just be like yeah. salty and sticky it's yeah just which not just good. that's not gonna boost morale yeah <laughs> as far as health goes uh obviously the next thing would be food and herbie baked bread which was amazing we've yeah, that mentioned that before yeah that was really awesome so no, you we... it also takes up way less room if you bake your own bread because yeah. you don't have these big loaves and they don't go bad yeah so we actually keep all our flour and all the ingredients in mason jars so they're all tucked away nicely and then for the water we used salt water to mm -hmm. make the bread because it's already got the salt in it so it was a pretty efficient way to store it and then you have this delicious bread at the end yeah now uh, as far as calories though mm. uh no we did not eat 2,000 calories a day no. at all we, we weren't actually hungry. We, we lost a ton of weight which yeah. was great <laughs> yeah <laughs> atlanta crossing <laughs> diet um let's see i lost i think 15 pounds i lost 40 pounds 40 i went from 205 to 165 <sighs> yeah I lost a lot of weight. We, lo we looked really good at the end. I mean, it's not something that we could have kept up for much longer. Yeah, we'd uh, Because we would away. waste away. Yeah. But the um, reality of it was we were not very hungry because we weren't doing much physical activity. We weren't expending any energy. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have one or two meals a day. Um, I would make sure to cook at least once a day, I think, uh, while the weather, weather was wasn't good. so choppy. Yeah, yeah. I... Um, I would cook either like a big breakfast or a big lunch or a big dinner. And that would be like our main meal of the day. And after that, we really felt like we were full. We didn't need anything else. Food is so important for morale. And so no. I do think it's important to have like good meals. Yeah. Like warm, hot meals. We know and some people. Meals. Yeah. We know some people who are cruisers who like just have like dried food or like slop that they eat during their cruising and yeah um, like we we have this one it's a favorite uh indian food it comes in a little packet yeah and we'll heat it and then we'll put it over rice and that's like our it's kind of too rough to cook so we'll just boil a pot of rice and this is it we met a guy that lives on those and he just opens it up and just eats it with a spoon cold, cold and i'm like oh man yeah so that's, like you know you need to be happy there are very few things that actually like really make you happy when you're cruising for an extended period of time and so i think food is really important yeah that it's one of now, them one thing when you're done with the food now you have waste and waste leads to health and hygiene because what do you do with it mm -hmm. so plastics we would rinse the plastic the container that stuff came in and then we'd stuff them all into mayonnaise jars because mayonnaise jars come in really thick heavy plastic so that kept the smells away mm -hmm. and all the plastic like tightly compacted 
Which took, like, because if you have, like, food lying around, even if it's on, like, the edge of a mason jar or, like, what was a jar of some sauce or something, it'll attract bugs. And start rotting. And start rotting. Just... And it can be really bad. Yeah. Um, so glass and stuff, we did have to dispose of. Yeah, glass, paper, and metals went overboard. Mm -hmm. Plastic never went overboard. Um, and that's simply because it was a health hazard. You can't have empty glass around. Uh, it could break. It could cut you. You know, you just, you can't risk this kind of stuff when it's just two of you on mm -hmm. a long-term boat ride across an ocean. Uh, and that's just... The reality yeah, of That's it. the reality. So as for um, foods that I would cook that are like easy cooking for a cruising lifestyle, pasta salads, fantastic, because you can do so much variance yep. with them. I mean, I would... All you have to do is heat up some pasta, and the great thing about it is you can eat it cold. Yep. So, um, and that's a really good way to get veggies, too, because you can kind of mix onions and greens and everything in with the pasta salad. And, and it keeps well. It keeps so really well. In calm weather time, you can make a bunch, and then you have leftovers yeah. when it's not so calm. So we would eat pasta salad for days. And the great thing is, too, you can, like, add protein, like chicken, or into eggs. it. Or eggs, yeah. Um, and with eggs, it's really good to hard boil a bunch of eggs before you leave yep. so that because they don't go bad as quickly and also you can make egg salad you can have just the egg the egg <laughs> itself like hard boiled egg dip it in salt and eat it that's a fantastic protein source um that's quick and easy when you're in a storm mm -hmm. and well we ate the heck out of those eggs that was yeah. great Rice and beans. Rice. Rice is fantastic. And because spam. You can do so much with the rice. Um, beans, as Herbie just said. Canned beans. As much as you can get in cans, that's great. Yeah, because um, cans will keep forever. Yeah. Uh, now, you got to store your cans properly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have ours tightly packed. I've seen some people that take the labels off and write what it is on it. If you store them properly, ours, like we have cans that we've been carrying for over two years. Yeah. Labels are still on them. Yeah, they're they're fine. Um, yeah. As long as you don't have them like loosely somewhere where they're chafing against each other. Yeah, ours uh, are like tightly fine. wedged in. And you got to make sure that where they are won't rust them. Mm -hmm. Because they can rust, get pinholes, and then you'll die of botulism. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And then um, another great thing is just chicken. Uh, we have the luxury of having a refrigerator. Some people don't have a refrigerator. Yeah. Um, but with our solar panels and our regen, we were able to keep the refrigerator going, which was fantastic. So we could store meats and stuff that we vacuum packed. So we had a lot of burgers and chicken. And you can do a lot of like different things with those meats. And, um, and if you don't have refrigeration, spam keeps forever. Spam was great. Like, I know that's... Yeah, it's, people rip on spam so yeah, much. But it's, it's actually, really good. It's good. The thing with spam is you have to make sure you stay pretty hydrated because it is heavily salted. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember, like, my we birthday... We were pretty much... We were just drinking water, like, the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my birthday breakfast, I wanted spam and eggs. Yeah. Because... So spam great. and eggs is a really great one. Yep. Um, you can do a lot with spam. It's very versatile. Uh, so if you get like those wraps, they store very well and they don't get moldy as quickly as just regular bread. So we could do spam and eggs in a wrap. Avocados are fantastic if you can get avocados. But they don't keep very They long. don't keep well, so you have to eat them in the first week. But yeah. I mean, it's great to like really boost your vegetable intake in the first week because you're not going to get a whole lot of fresh vegetables yeah. also, in the weeks to come. Uh, we carried apples and oranges and mm -hmm. it's important to keep the like citrus and stone fruits, keep them very separate from each other because mm -hmm. otherwise they'll both rot really fast. Potatoes, yes. um, keep them stowed in a dark, cold space so your bilge is perfect for potatoes. Mm -hmm. As long as you have good airflow. And you can use salt water to boil them. Yeah, and they are so good. <laughs> and then as far as storm cooking, we had... It's really important to think ahead and have, like, very simple things that you can just, like, pour in a pour in a pot and heat up and eat um, that doesn't require boiling water or anything like that. So SpaghettiOs, yep. really good um, because it gets you nice and full. It's got the little meats in there. It tastes like childhood. Yeah, it tastes like childhood. It's very nostalgic. Um, cheer SpaghettiOs were fantastic. Yeah, if it was really rough, we'd just look at each other like SpaghettiOs. Yeah. I mean, it's got lots of sugar. You know, it keeps you going. So 
not the healthiest option, but when you need it, you need it. Ramen, also really good because you oh, can yes. boil ramen in like no one water. inch of water. <laughs> yeah. And so actually, splashing was not an issue. One thing we that you can do, but we didn't do, you can actually just soak the ramen. Yeah. And it'll rehydrate. Mm-hmm. So you don't even have to heat it. Yeah. But we were always able to heat it. Yeah. It tastes better. <laughs> um, we have those, those like uh, hiking packaged, like, yeah. powder meat stuff which is really gross um yeah, but it we, came in handy yeah it kept us alive like yeah. it filled us up we weren't hungry it was just nasty well it was also our <laughs> first time eating them because i've met people that love them and they're honestly there are different types and some are better than others um yeah different the, recipes the pad thai is actually really good yeah it, that was delicious <laughs> but uh um the um, mountain masa or something masa was... mesa yeah that was nasty yeah uh but you know what Try them. When you're hungry, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yep. Yeah, hunger's the best seasoning. Yeah. Speaking of seasoning, it's really good to have lots of different, like, uh, spices and yes. seasoning because it can introduce Variety. a whole host of flavors into your food. And uh, if you're having the same old thing every day, you can add different seasonings and it can be a whole new meal. <laughs> yeah, spam and eggs with ginger. <laughs> uh, so that's really important and easy and light and they don't go bad. <laughs> With the provisioning, we didn't actually set up a meal plan and then go. Yeah, a lot of people ask, like, did you plan your meals day by day? The thing is, you can't really do that because you don't know what the weather's going to be. So all you can do is just plan for different circumstances. And make sure you have enough. So we've yeah. been cruising for about a year before we did the crossing. So we knew how much food we go through and how quickly. So we actually have the mason jars and we just we have these have to be filled with pasta and this is like a month's supply. Mm-hmm. So before we left, we made sure that our jars are filled. And we oversupplied. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important to do, honestly, because you never know what you're going to lose. Yep. Uh, you never know what's going to go bad, you know, faster than you expected. You never know if like some bug was in this and you didn't know it. So yep. it's really important to over prepare when it comes to food. Yeah. The other big thing, uh, being how we don't have a motor, so we can't motor if there's no wind. Uh, I was actually planning the worst. So I was, Mm -hmm. I planned their provisions for 80 days. Yeah. Thinking in 80 days, we drift into something. (laughs) Yeah. um, That's the other reason for sure to like over prepare because you don't know how long it's going to take you. You don't know if your motor, if you have a motor, you don't know if it's going to break down. Yeah. Actually, when we got to the Azores, we thought we did pretty slow because we were 24 days. And then the customs agent was like, oh, that's really good. Everyone's been in the 20s. And that guy, his motor died, and he was 40 days. Yeah. I'm thinking, we didn't motor either. (laughs) How did you take 40 days? Plan for double the time it'll take you to get there. And then also just add a week's food just, like, stored away. That's why we have Mm -hmm. so much rice and beans. That way we can live on the rice and beans for a week. Yeah. Or forever. (laughs) So I think we we did it all. We covered provisioning, uh, water, showering. Oh, one thing. As far as water goes, we don't have a water maker. Correct. Uh, because water makers can break, uh, membranes can tear. Like they can have all sorts of issues, and they are potential water, not real water. So we'd rather right. have the tank that's full than a water maker in that space that could produce that much water. And we do have a rain collector system, but it either never rained or was so rough that we couldn't collect we the water. We couldn't clean the deck off fast enough to actually collect water. And it didn't, when you're out there, you experience like micro bursts of weather. So it never rained long enough to both clean the salt off the deck and give us water. Yeah. Um, so that really was not a reliable source yeah. like so we thought it would be. We're glad we didn't count on it. Water makers, um, they make me nervous just because, uh, if you rely on them and they break, and it takes very little for them to break, uh, then you're out of water. Yeah. So it's good to know and that it, you have the water. And it really worries me because I'll meet people that took out a water tank to make space for their water maker. Yeah, that's and, it's concerning. Well, I mean, if you're going to be, you know, going to land frequently, yeah. that that's fine. Like, Yeah, if you're coastal, it's not an issue. But if yeah. you're crossing an ocean and are, like, real, risking your life on the fact that this thing's going to work... I wouldn't think again. I wouldn't yeah. do that. Yeah. If you guys have um, suggestions for really easy cooking, 
on yes. a boat, uh, on a crossing, then we'd love to hear them, as well as your own personal experiences with food and water on a crossing or just long-term cruising. Please share them with us. We we really want this to be a conversation. Yeah, and we're still learning. Like mm-hmm. we're always learning all the time. So if there's any suggestions you have for something we could do that would make our lives easier, yeah. please tell us. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Oh. So be free with those comments down below. Um, please stay tuned tomorrow because we're going to be having our next episode, which is going to be watches and safety on board. Um, two extremely important things that we learned about and had a lot of experience with uh, on our crossing. So we're excited to tell you about that. See you tomorrow.